So this final video is a bit of a bonus. That means it's not really necessary for the the tests or the exam or anything, but it is very important if you want to have a deep understanding um, of these vectors. And it's what I want to say is something interesting about the scalar and vector products. So to motivate this, let me tell you about a common mistake. Well, luckily not that common, but it does happen. I see a few examples of this every year at least. Some students try to multiply vectors like this, v and w, okay, which is vx, vy, vz, wx, wy, wz in an orthonormal basis, and they get the result vx, wx, vy, wy, vz, wz. So this looks like the scalar product instead, but instead of adding them all up to get the scalar product, they just leave it as a vector. Okay? So obviously this is wrong. Well, okay, it's not obvious this is wrong, and that's what I want to talk about. You can define vector multiplication like this, right? You're free to define multiplication however you want. So if you give me two vectors, you can always calculate this result here, and it's another vector. But the question is, why don't we multiply vectors together like this? So we've seen two ways of multiplying vectors together, which are the scalar product and the vector product. So this is some new way of multiplying vectors together. So I'll do this one with a circle. Let's call it the circle product. Okay. The question I want to answer is, why do we not do this? In other words, why are you why do you know to multiply vectors in this way and not in this way? Now I think for quite a few of you the answer might just be that this is what you've been taught, right? So from high school whenever you've learned to multiply vectors like this and you've never learned to multiply them like this. Okay? But that's not a very good answer, right? You shouldn't trust your teachers that much. The fact that you've learned to multiply vectors like this and not like this must mean that there's there's some reason for it, right? So there's something that means that this way of multiplying vectors is useful and this way of multiplying vectors is not useful. And you see this in physics, right? Because there are many physical formulas which make use of the these two vector and scalar product. For example, if I want to calculate the torque, suppose that I've got a bar which is fixed at one end and at the other end I apply a force F okay, and the, for, the bar has radius R then the torque which is the turning force on the bar is equal to the radial vector of the bar cross the force vector okay? so here they use the vector product an example of where you might use the scalar product let's suppose I've got a particle which is moving with some velocity v, and I apply a force to this particle, f, and I want to know how fast does the particle change its kinetic energy, right, because I apply a force it's accelerating, and then the rate of change of kinetic energy of the particle is equal to the force vector scalar product, the velocity vector. So these are two examples where the vector product and scalar products come up in physics and you can find many more. However, you never see an example in physics where you need to multiply vectors together like this. So what I'm going to do in this video is explain why is that. Why are this, these two ways of multiplying vectors useful where this way of multiplying vectors is not useful? Okay, okay so that's the question. Why do we see V dot W and V cross W in physical formulas? But never see this way of multiplying vectors like this, which I call the circle product, V circle W.
Okay, and it all comes down to something called the rotational symmetry of physical law. Okay. Which sounds like a big complicated thing. It's a very simple idea. What this means is, suppose that I've got some experiment Experiment number one, say, and I get some certain result. Okay. It says that if you do the same experiment again, but rotate it, experiment one prime, okay, rotate the experiment, then the results will be the same. So two identical experiments. where they are rotated through some angle will have identical results. Okay, and as far as we can tell, this is true of all physical laws. If you do an experiment, you take the same experiment just to rotate it at an angle, then you must get the same result. Okay. Now this implies something about the formulas that you can make for physical laws. So let's suppose we do this as an experiment. So in my experiment I have some particle, I apply a force to it and I measure its change in kinetic energy. Then the results must be the same. So in this experiment I would measure dE by dt which is equal to F dot V. And in this experiment I rotate it and I measure dE by dt prime dt, which is equal to F prime dot V prime. Okay? And the results of these two experiments should be the same. So what this means is that F dot V should be equal to F prime dot V prime. Okay? So in other words, if I have the original vectors like this, V and F. Okay. And I rotate them to vectors like this. F prime and V prime. Then the results will be the same. And this is obviously true, because we know that the scalar product of f and v is that f dot v is length of f, length of v, times the angle between them. But if all we do is rotate the experiment, then we don't change the length of v, and we don't change the length of f, and we don't change the angle between them. This angle here is exactly the same as this angle there. right? So therefore, as long as your formula is using the scalar product, you can be sure that this symmetry is true. Okay? As long as your physical law is expressed in terms of the scalar product, you can be sure that rotating the experiment will not change the answer. Okay. And exactly the same thing is true of the vector product. The way we define the vector product means it doesn't change if you rotate the experiment, okay, as you can check for yourself. However, let's look at this and ask what happens here. So what happens here, if I take these two vectors and then I rotate them, will I still get the same answer? Okay. And you might guess the answer turns out to be no. Okay, so I'm going to take a very simple example of this. I'm going to start with the vector v, which is 1, 0, 0, and w, which is 0, 1, 0. Okay. So then the xy plane. So if I draw them like this, look like this, this is v, 
this is W, okay? And according to my circle product, V dot circle W is this times this, which is zero, this times this, which is zero, and this times this, which is zero, okay? So I get the answer zero in this case. So now you rotate it. Okay, so I'm going to rotate by 45 degrees just to keep the maths nice and simple. So if you rotate it by 45 degrees, then you have this. Okay, this is V and this is W. Okay, so my original axes are like this, and the lengths of these are 1. So it's not difficult to work out that in this case, V is this length here is 1 over square root 2. This length here is also 1 over square root 2, 0. And W is this one. So this length here is minus 1 over square root of 2. And this again is 1 over square root 2, 0. And now if I compute the in the prime frame, so these are the primes, the circle product, then you get this times this, which gives you a half. This times this is minus one, this times this is one, this times this is zero. Okay? Which absolutely is not equal to the circle product in the original frame. Okay? Not even equal to the rotated version of it. So you see that here this circle product does not have this symmetry. If I have two vectors and I rotate them, then the answer changes. Okay? And that means that we can never find a physical law which is described in terms of this circle product. Because if I do that, then this physical law will never have this rotational symmetry. But as far as we know, all, all physical laws do have rotational symmetry. So that means that this is a non-starter. You will never see this. Okay. So although it makes mathematical sense to multiply vectors together like this, we never do it. It's never useful because this way of multiplication does not preserve this rotational symmetry. Whereas the scalar products and vector products as we define them do preserve this rotational symmetry.